right, I need you to help me give the biggest Phoenix Comic Con welcome to the woman who made communicating in space look easy, Miss Nichelle Nichols. and I know you want to take pictures, but please don't go over here. We have a hearing impaired section and if you walk in front of them to take a photo, they don't know what's going on. Stay out where you are, please. All right, Ms. Nichols, hi. So I thought I'd ask you just a few questions and then if you want to share some stories or our audience will be lining up over here for questions from them. Is that okay? It's okay with me. All right, fabulous. With you? Nice, there we go. Okay, everybody wants to talk about the Ovara Kirk kiss. I know you've heard it a million times. But I have a question. Was it really that big of a deal? I mean, didn't Kirk go around kissing other women all the time? Captain Kirk would never do that. <laughs> Once he kissed Uhura. <laughs> so, were you aware when you were filming that kiss that it was going to be so groundbreaking and crazy for America? I didn't know that it was. It was just an integral part of the story. Line. And it wasn't like, you know, they were lovers. It just was something that uh, happened, as I recall. Um, but but um, it, was, it was in the 23rd century, for Christ's sake. <laughs> my grandmother and grandfather did it before I was born, before my father was born. All right, well, along with... Kissed each other. <laughs> Interracial kiss. <laughs> you had to clarify. I understand. Um, so, on the series, you also got to show off your musical talents. I got to what? Show off your musical talents. You got to sing. Oh, sing. Oh, uh -huh. I've been um, extremely um, supportive of our National Space Program. Um, when I first met uh, the, the very erudite people who work at NASA, I discovered they're all Trekkies. <laughs> So help me. <laughs> they know if we did it, they know it. Uh, and, and that was exciting uh, for me and to me um, because they, they feel like we represent in a 
positive and important way who they are. So um, there are more trekkers than, uh, there than, uh, than walking around the street, I think. <laughs> and, and they're very proud of it. So I, I really like them. Good. So you've mentioned all the Trekkies. Have you seen the new Trek movies? Have I what? Seen the brand new movies? The Star Trek reboot? The new one? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Do we want to know what you think of them? You like the movie? I, I thought there, there was a lot of innovative uh, new things uh, instead of just repeating what's being done mm -hmm. and confined to that, I thought uh, there was a, a great deal of imagination that had to, that, uh, do you agree? I don't know. Uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, input and that's what Star Trek does. That's why I think that Star Trek is so powerful. It because, um, it makes you think, and, uh, and there's this great what if, and, it, and if it's in the 23rd century, how much has really ch uh, changed and grown and, and uh, evolved. And so I really kind of liked it to see how um, we imagine um, a, a trek to be, you know, and, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, as long as I don't take it into somewhere that you go, huh? <laughs> then, and then, um, it's a good thing to imagine. That's, that's what artistry is. That's what writing is about. That's what uh, taking it and saying, if we could do this, what could we do if we went this way, yeah. or that way. It's kind of like um, um, designing a dress, you know, and you design something absolutely magnificent, and everybody's talking about it, and you go, I love it. I wonder what it would look like if we did this to it. You know, and that's creative. It's, that it's, it, it's something that um, provokes the creative mind. And for me, I think that's wonderful. Uh, as long as it doesn't go idiotic. <laughs> idiotic is a little good sometimes, but not too much all the time. <laughs> Would you do a cameo if they asked you as a woman? If I what? Would you do a cameo in another Star Trek? Would I do a cameo of yeah. Uhura? Yes. No, I do a lead role. <laughs> Nichols. Hi there. Hi. I have been a long time fan, um, and I do want to quickly let you know that you are one of the most beautiful women who... <laughs> you actually... Yes. You are one of the five women who are responsible for me not realizing I was gay. Okay. You kept me going for a long time. <laughs> I do want to say, I very much enjoy your singing career. I know a lot of the questions here today will probably be about Star Trek and your other things, but I even have, like, your first album, Dark Side of the Moon, Starry Eyed is one of my favorite songs. I'm not hearing you, the microphone oh. is distorting what I'm hearing. Okay. Um, how about, can you catch me now? How about now? Can you hear me now? 
I can hear you, but I'm not quite sure what no, you're saying. Speak slower. I will speak slower. There we go. Right and lower. Yes. And lower. Okay, I can do that. That's fine. Slower and lower. Yes. That's very good. We'll have a moment, don't we? It's you and me right now. Yes, baby. So, like I was saying, I've enjoyed your musical career. I have your first album, Starry Eye, or Dark Side of the Moon. Yes. Starry Eye is one of my favorite songs of yours. You did a one-woman show where you got to play a whole bunch of different jazz singers. What was that like? I've never found anything about it other than knowing it existed. Well, when I, I think it goes back to when I was a kid and found out um, that I could do a lot of things. I, I didn't know it was called impersonating. <laughs> um, but I had um, a lot of um, favorite stars who were, thank you. And I used to entertain my mother and father and, and my sisters and brothers. And so our dad would say, okay, she's going, Michelle's going to do, what was it called, Grace, but I uh, is going to do a show for us. He's going and tell us what it is. And then I'd tell him, explain to them what I'm going to do. And then I was, would do all of these characters as, as I, I put them in my show, I cast them in my show. And, and then I would, uh, I would do the men, you know, which, uh, whatever he was going to do. And I would do the women, whoever she was going to be. And I'd do the kid who was questioning what mom and dad were talking about. And then I do the little baby. <laughs> and so I have fun doing, and then I do the neighbor. We all got one of those, you know. <laughs> and it was fun to create. Now I, I was um, maybe, um, I was really young. I was, Maybe in my teens, I don't think I was in my teens yet, but from a little kid, I, I would, yeah, from a little kid, I would design uh, these, these shows, and when my, and, and they knew it was coming, my mom and dad, and so they shush all my sisters and brothers and shut up and they, and then the neighbors found out about it. I put on this show, you know, and I would play all these characters, and they would laugh, and they would go, oh, and they would love it, you know, and I got, found out then, I'm an actress, <laughs> it's what they call it, and that's how I became an actress who could sing and dance and do characters, and uh, it seemed, um, it didn't seem strange to me, or phenomenal, it just seems like, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be talking about, then you've got to go to voice of a man who says to his wife one thing, and she says, well, I wasn't thinking of it in that way, and so I would just create characters. And then I finally started uh, um, recording them and taping them and, um, and, and developing them further. So that started me in my writing. Yeah. And then I would uh, get all the kids in the neighborhood and cast them after I auditioned. <laughs> And, and they were just so excited about it. They, they were, some were really, really good. And uh, others were, well, they had to play the ushers or something. <laughs> but I had fun growing up and, and, being, and being 
taking a lot of characters. I didn't know that I, I was capable of it um, because it was just something that I did, you know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Love you. Love you more. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, how disappointed were you when you learned? Does that microphone come this way? It, does it have any more? You bought my camera? You bought my camera? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, what's the second time? I was just saying. <laughs> so, I was wondering, what was your first reaction when you heard that we, as a country, were not doing any more space flight, and the only thing that we would be doing was sending rovers to other planets, like the Curiosity Rover? Not true. They may have thought or decided not to, and that might be the case for a while. But can you imagine once having gone to the moon, stopping there? It just takes so many times. This is the beginning. It's just the beginning. And there will always, even intelligent people, goof up. Um, <laughs> uh, it might. Um, just kind of uh, settle in on one little thing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one little thing um, for a while. But the mind keeps growing. You know, it's like the first person that wrote a song said, oh, and put music to it. Do you think it stops there? No. no. <laughs> and then you hear a song, and you say, I can do that. And you do your thing. And that's what creativity to me is, is like. And all quiet so of course. Yeah. So if, if you can if you can dream it, you can do it. You can think it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we all over here or there's nobody over there, right? Nobody over here. Who's talking to me? <laughs> Hi. What was your reaction when you saw that uh, Spock and uh, her were together in the new Star Trek movie? When I saw that Spock and uh, who were one? Were together in the new Star Trek movie.
take you somewhere that you might not have gone intellectually or before. Hmm? Yeah. And, and that's what people are about. You exchange ideas. And sometimes we really are attracted, uh, uh, drawn to someone because they think or speak in, in where, where your brain goes, aha, that's very interesting. You know, and, and it might take you to a personal togetherness or not. Maybe it's just a big business. That's how business people work. They think a lot about it. You know, it doesn't even have to marry them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that's, that's what makes human beings uh, greater than the lower forms of animals. We can think and extract from what someone else thinks and take it from there and argue the point. And uh, argue the point and not be mad. I argue the point with people and we almost knock down and drag out. We would wind up laughing like crazy. <laughs> because we both got a new view that didn't have before. Make sense? Thank you. Hi there. Hi, Michelle. My name is Jason. Jason? Yes. Hi, Jason. Um, my, one of my favorite non popular roles for you was probably Chuck Turner, until um, more recently you just did a part in a movie called True Love. Oh, and that was recently. That was, um, that was some time ago. True <laughs> Love. Yeah. True Love, you played the grandma of a gay teenager. Mm -hmm. And you were the loving grandmother who just used to ask the question, are there any cute black girls at that school you go to? And then when your teenager grandson came out, you still continued to be the loving grandmother and you just asked, well, there are any cute black boys at that school? That was the character. And people can often get uh, actors confused with the character that they play. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, you might not believe it at all, but that's not you. But the character is interesting, and you want to play that character the way the character is, not the way you think the character should be, or that all the characters would be the same. <laughs> well, as that character, I think you force people to think about the role of families and how they affect the way to you. I think you force families to think about how they treat their babies. Their babies. Their babies. Yes. And I really applaud you for taking that role. And I want to ask you, Michelle Nichols, how do you feel about same-sex marriage and about LGBT equality? Everybody is different. Some people believe one way and other people believe another way. I don't have to be have to believe exactly in a way to appreciate or uh, to appreciate the ability to argue the point with you. Uh, that makes sense. It does. And still like you and have great respect for your intelligence. Do, do you know, I don't have to get mad at you because you don't think the way I do. <laughs> or you don't have to get mad at me because I, I don't think the way that you think. But I can, I can separate it and think about it and where you're coming from, you know, and examine it and go, aha. And then I see another part of you that I didn't know, and I can know you deeper. Uh, I can also hide myself. <laughs> the, the more I know, the more I'm able to communicate or not. 
As Gopura, you gave women permission to be powerful. You gave black people permission to seek advancement. And it's nice to know that you're still forcing people to think. Yes. And you are still changing the way we see this world. And I applaud you. Thank you very much. There was a time when we would not, if you, anybody at any point in time, stand up and turn around and look at the audience. There was a time when the audience would not look like this. The audience would all look one way. Either all female or all male or all kids or all black or all white or all yellow or all red. It gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> and so, viva la default! How did you guys build the ship? How did you guys build the ship? Did I board the ship? No. Did you guys build the ship? What does he say? He's saying build. How did they build the ship here in the show? How did you board the ship? <laughs> oh, we beamed up when the ship was there. You didn't take another little ship to go there. You and then it, your molecules and then we assembled them. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense to me. What? What do you think? I think so too. I think somebody very, very brilliant discovered that. Yes. While filming Star Trek, what was your favorite memory? What did you say about Star Trek? <laughs> well, filming Star Trek. While well, filming Star Trek. What was your favorite memory? Being um, Gene Lunder, being um, chosen for this. Uh, um, discovering this this incredible mind that he possessed, and um, and and then to be a part of it, to be allowed to be a part of it, and to give my own insight into it, and. Um, and Gene Monbury was an, an incredible human being. Um, he did not say, you do it my way or no way. He said, you kept, saw it another way and you'd say, prove it. And you, then you had to, it was like, just like if you're an actor and you see a part and you think it's one way and nothing is one way. You're not even the same all the time, right? And so a character that you're being cast to play, the producer or director that even cast you um, has an idea of what that character is and tells you about it. It is not your job to take that carte blanche and stay within it because nobody is just one way. But there, how did that person get to be that way? Where did that come from? Where is that going? Is it good uh, for humankind or is or is it just talk? And, 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 and that's why 
We are so wonderful because we can have all of these thoughts that are just as valid as what I believe. And just because I have a microphone <laughs> and can reach you all the way in the back doesn't mean that you in the front or in the back have to accept everything I say. Naturally, I wish you would. <laughs> if you were smart enough. <laughs> Don't we all feel that way? I mean, we really think and then uh, uh, we really think if we think and we develop something and that's how ideas become reality because someone sat down and thought it up and um, that's the way a lot of things don't happen because you think them up and then you convince yourself Nah, no, that couldn't be possible. Gene Roddenberry would reveal that way. He would think something up or somebody would come along and think something to him. And he'd take it, take it home and think about it. And sometimes something marvelous happened out of it that you thought he just created. And he did because someone laid it out there, or a piece of it, and they, that's what thoughts are, they grow. They grow, or they just sit there until someone comes along and says, that's pretty interesting. I never thought about that. How many times have you said that? I never thought of it that way. And then, that will never leave your mind, by the way. So you might as well take it and think about it. <laughs> Whether it's good or bad. Uh, or, you know, not so good. Like, nothing is good or bad. It's something that uh, makes sense. Thank you.
Um, you. Okay. You. <laughs> you. Who would you rather kiss, William Shatner or Leonard Nimoy? Go right ahead with what you were talking about. I'm going to think about this for the next 40 years. <laughs> it depends on what day it is. <laughs> Thank you. Not as curly, but it's also pretty curly. It's beautiful. Yeah. You see this beautiful curly hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm interested to hear uh, your opinion um, as, as you and your character in Star Trek fall in. Icons for equality, not least among um, among which I think the issue of race. And I'm just interested to hear your opinion um, from one actor to another on race and its place now in the entertainment industry and how it's grown and what still is left to do. Uh, the question is, what's is left to do still to do? Three. I think, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know what's still to do, if anything. I don't think, I don't know if it ever was. It simply is. It becomes what it becomes when you question it. And then if you question it, and it is there in your mind, strong enough for you to examine it and disagree with it and aha it ah yes then it becomes something fresh and new because it's out of you you might do the same thing and it's not fresh and new it's just really a good okay and some, at some point in time, you're forced to think about it as So, uh, thoughts are things, including That's a thought, on, uh, on, on it. but if we, we must always respect the fact that we think that we think about something. It's, one of the, it's the most precious gift that God gave us. And she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. But um, you, you see what I'm saying? Because I might be totally right in those of you who clap. Um, God is not male or female. God is, and, and God bless it, <laughs> it is so. Um, but to get back to your question again. Um, I guess just your opinion on, on how um, race is treated in the entertainment industry. Race is treated just like anything else is treated. We are taught to think a certain way. And at some point in time, because we have minds that are, yours is not yours and yours is not his, we think in a different way. We think 
deeply about what that all we dismiss it. At some point in time, if enough people start thinking a certain way or examining, then other people come along and say, no, I didn't think that was such a big deal. And suddenly you're thinking about it. And suddenly a lot of other people are thinking that way or not. Or thinking a third way or a fourth way or another way. And in so doing, you have something worthy, worth thinking about because it can create a whole other way of living. I remember that when Star Trek first came out um, and became popular, and we went out to some, the entire audience was white. It wasn't that there were no black, brown, yellow, red, or green other people uh, looking at it and enjoying it. It's just, it wasn't, we didn't communicate together uh, like we do now. We don't even think, we don't even have to think about it. Right? And, um, and so, one of the great things about Star Trek it, is it opened up that whole avenue, this huge avenue of communication. Because you do want to know what that person is thinking about and how it's different from what you think. And you do want to know what that person is thinking about because it's the same as you think and it corroborates how you think. And then out of that grows life. Um, not the kind that's in the belly that comes out of it. But that. <laughs> but, um, but it is, it, it is. And from that, that people, well, I never thought about it that way. Then somebody else comes along and thinks about it that way, and then somebody else comes along and thinks about it. And if we had a box that could listen um, with, through electricity and set it on the stage, a person could hear themselves and realize that other people are hearing them and realize that you, way back there, may or may not be listening to me, but I think you are because you're quiet and attentive and thinking. And if I say something that you agree with, Sometimes the ones that are not clapping are going, hmm, yeah, I can live that. Huh? <laughs> or, hmm, there goes another one of those people in my house. But that's what makes people so interesting. And that makes me very, 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 very proud that I'm one of the people. A people. Aren't you? I agree. We are the people. Um, because we have this ability, this mind, and this ability to think and as we think, even we change, we argue our thinking, don't we? To ourselves, we argue ourselves. Uh, no, no, on the other hand, we do it all the time. So we're constantly thinking, arguing it, refining it, dismissing it, growing it, and the world is either better for it or 
until somebody else sees it another way. The human race is just about the greatest thing that God put on this earth or beyond the earth because why it's so important that we, we are who we are on earth, we are thinking finally. It's not just the moon up there for years and years here. Well, the moon comes out at this time because we need it to shine down on us at such a time. And so you didn't tell the moon what to do. <laughs> you use it, but you, <laughs> you know, it makes something that you can relate to. And then you want to know more about it. What's on that moon that shines at a certain time in the day? And why? Why now when it was, where was it when the sun was shining? And we start, in other words, we start questioning. And the more we question, the more we create something that nobody thought of. Well, that's not true. Somebody did think about it, thought of it. But you did something with it. That's the difference. That's the difference. You can think it and think yourself. But now you can use it. Yes, now you can use it. Because somebody went ahead and did the next step and the next step. Maybe you stopped there and somebody came and just picked it up from there. So, make sense? Good question. Hi there. Hi, Ms. Nichols. Um, so, as a fellow musician, I had no idea you could sing. I've been a fan of Star Trek only for years, though, but still, I had no idea you could sing. You have a great voice. From the time I missed this high, <laughs> I came out singing. <laughs> My father swears it. <laughs> he delivered me. So, he swears the first thing I did was hit high C. <laughs> So, and he promoted it, you see. In other words, he said, she's screaming again, shut, shut that child up. You know? <laughs> the child is trying to communicate. Ah, ah, ah. Remember? Yeah, he's, he's going. How did she do? <laughs> So my, um, my question is, are you um, still friends with your fellow cast members, such as Bill Shatner and other people? Never have not been. Sorry? I never have not been friends with them. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to agree with somebody all the time to be friends or to be glad they're breathing the air that you would breathe. I don't have to agree with certain people, certain parents, I'm a star chef. But I will follow him to the ends of the earth because he knows what he's doing. Just because I don't like how he, or how many of them do. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with what he can really give to the world. Same thing with me. Same thing with you. Each and every one of us has something to give to this world. Or then what the hell are we doing here? Right? What are we doing here if we're not making it better? Better than those that are trying to make it worse, you know? 
Uh, make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? What do you want? Okay. We have time for one more question. I have time for about 5,000 more questions, but I can only take one more. You can take the rest downstairs. <laughs> oh, I can take the rest downstairs. No, I can't. <laughs> I can sign your autograph downstairs. It'll cost you. Yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. This lady was a huge, huge, huge fan of the Star Trek comics. But you did a movie in 1986 called Supernaturals. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I can get a sequel out of you now that you're producing. <laughs> if I can, you can. If you can do a sequel to Supernaturals now that you're in the producing game. It didn't even occur to me, but that's, you see? <laughs> see what happens when we play? As a child, I used to. My dad used to watch Star Trek. And yes. Watch Supernatural. Ah. Watch just that for us, like nobody's business. Yes. In which case, you could just do that. A marvelous idea. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, is there any way we can run the Howard Stern show and get George and William Shatner back together? Get them to stop shooting. I wouldn't go on the highest street if they paid me a gazillion dollars. I lie. If they paid me a gazillion dollars, I'd buy the station and fire it. Is there any way you can get George and William Shatner to stop shooting? Any way you can do that for us? To get them to what? To stop feuding, to arguing. George and... William Shatner. They're in a huge fight. They dislike each other. I was wondering if you could be the moderator and get them to kiss, play kiss out. <laughs> that would disgust me if I said that. <laughs> Human beings, the magical thing about each and every one of us, no matter if for twins, we're different. And as far as I'm concerned, I might not like one more than the other or less than the other. But isn't it interesting that they're going at it and I have something to put my wasted thoughts on? <laughs> Um, we should take this time to think about that, that question, when we could be going to the moon and planting there and building towers of intellectual pursuit and living on the moon and going to what else is out there. I don't care whether Bill and Tina get it or not. And let, let them figure it out. Let me start you out some questions. Take her view of the night and view of the night and view of the See, I give you another thought. I want and, and, and Bill Shatner and who? Bill Shatner and George. George Sukai. To King. To King. To King. You know, that would be a perfect pay per view special. You need a moderator to watch them and watch them then and out. And I want commission on that, too. A, root, a fruitless venture. <laughs> might be a million dollars. It, it, it might. It might at that. It's still a fruitless picture. <laughs> Thank you. Supernatural too. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, before I leave, I'm gonna do one thing. Oh, go for it. Bye. You're the queen for a while more. Go for it. What do you what, what would you like to do? Sit.
right here and talk to the other side of the room. <laughs> Um, question anybody? All right, I'm over here, y'all. Yes, standing up. She's right behind me. She, yes. No, the one was pointing to everybody else. What would you want to know? Did you keep a triple? Did I see them? Keep one. Did you take one as a pack? Did I keep one? Yeah, but I have to keep it in this little cage when I'm out of town. <laughs> it's smarter than I am. <laughs> it would do all kinds of things that you wouldn't think of possible. Love the little stinkers, though. <laughs> yes, who, what? Can you tell us, somebody mentioned earlier, and I was actually just planning on asking, can you tell us about your interactions with Martin Luther King Jr.? Could I tell you about Martin Luther King Jr.? Your interactions with Martin Luther King Jr.? Oh, is that the thing? Um, yes. And he was a trekker, by the way. <laughs> um, who the what? was profound. Um, I, I was a follower of him. Of him. Um, I thought he was the most brilliant man I had never met. And to, up to, to this point in time. And I was this, I was, it was after about the perhaps first year of Star Trek. And we were going to go, be going into, this, I guess, the second season, our third. And I'm a singer, a dancer, and a damn good one, a uh, dancer, uh, a ballerina, and, and uh, an actor. And I grew up knowing that I was going to be famous from Broadway. I still do. I still do, but I never. I I worked on Broadway, did some other things. I covered for Diane Carroll uh, on her show, and they were. And then she came back to work. And no, she wanted to be to be off for a while. She was going to leave the show, and then she came. And they were going. I. I they got me to come in and be and learn this, the the uh, show, and they liked what they saw. <laughs> and Diane came in and said, "I'll never leave the show as long as you're here in the show." I just thought you might want to know. <laughs> and I said, "Oh, that's fine, Diane. Just be aware that I keep banana peelings in my purse." <laughs> And she said, what? For what? I said, watch out. There's one right there. You might slip and fall. <laughs> and hurt yourself, and then I have to take over yourself. Um, I don't think that really happened, but it sounded <laughs> <time. laughs> um, Somebody over here asked me a question I didn't answer. Ms. Nichols, I'm sorry, but we have to leave the stage. I gotta find out that one. That one question? That one question. Yes. Who was the person that asked me a question? Please. How do you stay absolutely fabulous? <laughs> How do I get what? How do you stay absolutely fabulous? Well. 
wonderful being with all of you. And at any time, you want my absolutely fabulous body. Before you, I'll be there. And to be with you and thank each and every one of you for being, for making the word treasure one of the most beautiful words in the universe. I thank you. I thank you, treasures. I love you all. Thank you.